Yes. So again, this is a place where these rules just have to be memorized and if you have them uh, readily available in your memory, you'll work through these questions more quickly and if not, they can get you on a pretty straightforward question and uh, sometimes people kind of forget what they can do and what they can't do when they're, when they're working with exponent rules. So if you're comfortable with these, great. If not, you just have to memorize them. X squared times X cubed is X to the fifth. We add these values when the bases are similar. When we are adding, we cannot do that. X squared plus X cubed is just that, X squared plus X cubed. Uh, it does not translate like this did. And when we have XY quantity squared, the thing to remember is that we're distributing this two to both the X and the Y. And if you notice that in the issue, in the, in the, in the places of multi where multiplication is concerned, we can do this with exponents where we're using addition, we are not. Looking at fractions that we raise to powers, x over y cubed is the same as x cubed over y cubed. We, remember, we should remember these issues from uh, a couple of weeks ago that anything raised to the zero is one and anything raised to the one is itself. Over here we have a different situation. So these are sort of the main situations that we, you know, the main exponent rules that they like to play with where we're raising one, frac one exponent and raising it to another. In that case we multiply them and they like these because people often confuse one, two, and three with each other. And then if you want to take case four, uh, some people get that confused as well. So as you can imagine on a test where you have a couple of minutes to answer each question and you're nervous because your future depends on it. If you don't have these readily memorized, you could replace one with the other and you're just going to get the question wrong. So let me see if I can scare you into memorizing these questions. And then take a look at this situation, x squared over x cubed. That equals 1 over x over 1 because what we can do is x to the 2 minus 3 which is x to the negative 1 which is the same as 1 over x to the 1. So these are all from grade school. But if you don't have them memorized, then the, on an information management challenge, uh, you could manage the information incorrectly because you don't have this exponent rule readily available. Let's talk about roots. When we're multiplying uh, root x times root x, we get x. When we're adding uh, roots with common bases, we get root x plus root x equals 2x. There's two of them. And when we're raising something, uh, when we're finding the uh, cube root of a variable or a value, it's just the same as raising it to the power of one third. So these are sort of interchangeable. Let's look at this situation here where we have the cube root uh, and the, the, the fourth root of a variable. We know that x to the third times x to the fourth, we can replace these. And then based on uh, our rules up here, looks like this guy, right? We can add these two uh, and we should get x to the 1 12th. In this situation where we are uh, raising, we're taking uh, x to the fourth, the fourth root of x and raising it to 3, um, let's just take it in pieces. First, translate the inside to this, to x to the 1 4th, and then if we notice it's pretty similar to this over here and when we're raising one exponent to the other we just multiply them so it's just three times one fourth which is x to the three fourths. So important to have these rules memorized. The GMAT likes to use them because they can turn a simple information management challenge and uh, make you get it incorrect just because you missed one of these rules. Let's talk a little bit more about exponent rules and then we'll take a look at an example. Um, just a couple of things to keep in mind when you're working these questions. Positive fractions raised to powers smaller than the original value. This is what you get. So one half raised to the four is less than one half. And as you can imagine, knowing this could be helpful on a data sufficiency question when all you really need to know is whether something is less than something else. Uh, so anytime you're raising a fraction to 
a power, it gets smaller. Positive fractions raised to powers um, are smaller than the original value. Uh, also keep in mind that the root of 4 equals 2. It does not equal plus or minus 2. Rather, the, way we, the place we see the whole plus or minus 2 thing go down is when we're trying to find the solution to this equation of x squared equals 4. We know that the values of x are that they could be 2, but x could also be negative 2, and this equation would be satisfied. So the root of 4 is not plus or minus 2. Uh, rather, the solutions to this equation are that x can equal 2 and x can equal negative 2. So let's take a look at an example of a question. We have a data sufficiency question at this point. I shouldn't have to keep asking or telling you that we are looking at a little 1, 2, 10 situation. Now let's ask ourselves whether or not the, uh, what we're dealing with is a data sufficiency yes, no question. So if both A and B are non-zero integers, right? So just to help me keep track, A does not equal 0. B does not equal zero, but they're integers. What is the value of A, B? They're not asking me yes or no question here. They really want to know what A, B equals. Great, and we just need to know whether or not we can figure that out. We don't actually have to find the value of A, B. We just have to know whether or not we know what the value of A, B would be given the information that we have. So uh, let's take a look. A squared equals B squared. So A squared equals B squared. Now, let's try some values. Let's say that A is 2 and we know that it has to equal B squared, so B could be negative 2. Just to try some values because here we get 4 equals 4 uh, and that sounds good. In this context, we do know what A, B is. It would be 16. Um, but let's try some different numbers. Let's say that uh, let's say that a we have the same equation a squared equals b squared. Let's try actually I want to see if we can get some values from folks. Go ahead and type in a couple of values before I write them down. Of some values that we could try so that we would get something different for a b. Well, let's just try three. If we try 3, we get 3 squared, and we'll do the same thing. Uh, in this context, we'll just say that b is also 3. So here we get 9 equals 9. That makes sense. But 9 times 9 is different than 4 times 4. So I'm, with this information alone, I'm not sure that I can tell you exactly what a, b is. In one situation, it was 16. In another situation, it's 81. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Great, let's try the second statement. We know that the root of b equals 2. So they're asking me what a, b equals. I can already tell you that if all I know is a value of b, I'm not going to be able to tell you what a, b equals. It's going to be a, whatever the value of b is here. And I don't need to figure out the value of b. And if I did, I'd be wasting my time on the GMAT. I just need to know that given the information in statement two, I don't have enough information to tell you what the value of a, b is so I can get rid of it. The only question is, can I combine this information with this information and get some value? And even in this situation, I could start trying some numbers and multiplying them and adding them and, and working them together and replacing variables. But I know that I can get different values for three, sorry, for A and B by trying all sorts of numbers that satisfy this condition. Um, and just given that the root of B is two, I can still get different values. So these statements, um, these, this information together, I don't think is going to be sufficient to give me anything. Let's see if we're correct. That's right. And of course, in, in Grokit, if you're a Grokit standard member, you can always click the explanation button and get a detailed explanation as to why the right answers are right. Put together, we still, not, we still cannot determine, uh, and this will help us sort of uh, figure that out as well. You can also access uh, student-generated comments and responses that are left in, in the reviews, which you should be doing if you're a Grokit standard member. It's just important to review as it is to do more questions. So if, you're, if you've answered every question in Grokit 5,000 times over, 
uh, but you've only reviewed 10% of your questions, then you should spend uh, a couple thousand hours like you spend answering the questions, reviewing the questions, and then after you've done that, go into Grokit and teach people all the things you've learned, and I can pretty much guarantee you, you'll become a GMAT master. Great. Let's talk a little bit about inequalities. We should have enough time here. We have another 10 minutes. If we go over by a couple of minutes, we will. If not, we'll kind of continue these points next week. So inequalities on the GMAT, they are an expression of a range of values rather than a single value. We want to treat inequalities as equations by isolating the variables that we have to solve. Remember to reverse the direction of the sign if you multiply or divide by a negative. And in data sufficiency questions, use the endpoints. Remember on data sufficiency questions, a lot of times we're trying to disprove something. So the endpoints of a range can be helpful in un us understanding whether or not the rules of the information given will satisfy what we're being asked for. So and don't forget that these are two very different things. Well, they're, not, they're similar, but they're also very different. Um, so in data sufficiency questions, um, Remember to use the endpoints as markers to test. Uh, great, let's actually take a look at a inequality question together. We have a data sufficiency on our hands. Let's go ahead and set it up and see if we're dealing with a yes, no. If m and n are positive integers, what is the value of m minus n? We are not dealing with a yes, no question. So we know that m and n are positive integers, okay? They are positive integers. What is the value of m minus n? That's what they want to know. So given statement one, that m n is equal to 16, they want to know what m minus n is. So what are some values that we could go ahead and try here? We could say 1 times 16. We could say 2 times 8. And already I know that I'm going to get different values for m minus n. If n is 16, we'll get negative, we'll get what, uh, negative 15 here, um, and then 2 minus 8 would be negative 6. So two different values. I don't know what m minus n is. I can immediately get rid of 1 and e. Great, let's look at statement number 2. m equals n cubed. Okay. So, in this situation, I could have all sorts of values for m and n, and, sorry, make sure I'm on the right question here. I lost this question, but shouldn't be a problem. Don't worry, we'll keep working. So, Again, we should be able to find all sorts of values that work here. So if m was, uh, sorry, rather, if, uh, if n was 1, 1 cubed, well, m would be 1. Um, but if n was, if n was uh, 2, we'd have 2 cubed, so m would be 8 in that situation. So again, we're getting different values. I think we can get rid of b. The question is, if we put these two pieces of information together, can we know? So, if we know that mn equals 16, what are the other possibilities for this? We could do 4 times 4. Is there anything else we're missing, Jake? 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. If they're integers, that's about it. If they're integers, I think that's it. And we know that they're positive integers, so we can't try the negative values. So I think that's all we have here. And if these are the possibilities here, and then we also know that m equals n cubed, well, in this situation, m is not n cubed. And in this situation, m is not n cubed. But in this situation, it is. So if the information in statement 1 and the information in statement 2 are taken together, then we only have one possible value. And that would give us this. We don't need to figure it out. It should be the case that these two together will give us the right answer. That's great. All right, so in this situation, again, we're dealing with some number properties here. 
uh, positive integers. You just have to keep these things in mind. If you started trying negative values, you would have been wasting your time.